We're going to look now at a very specific question on liberation theology. So this is theme 4F um, and we know this unit as liberation theology. We've already shared and it should be in this playlist a video looking at how to answer a question about Keturis and liberation theology. Um, and also I will put a link below this video where you can see a mark scheme to a very general question on liberation theology. So there are two scholars or two liberation theologians that you have to understudy, understand rather, and one of those is Guitaris and one of them is Boff. So this essay is going to look in particular at Boff. And just like the other essay, I've taken the wording from the specification and I've said explain the basis of South American liberation theology with reference to Leonardo Boff, but the basis means political, ethical and religious. They might just say explain the basis, which is what they've done on the sample question. They might pick one or two of these. Before we talk through this video, I'm just going to explain how I have put this essay together. So I sit and I type in 20 minutes and I do so under exam conditions. So these are not perfect answers, but they should have the subject knowledge and the skills to get you an A star. If they don't, I need to look for another job really, don't I? There will be typos in there. I can see some things that are highlighted, um, but there should not be significant fundamental errors. Because I type these in 20 minutes and you write in 20 minutes and you tend to write slower than I type. And also I'm just doing one question, whereas you will start to get tired as you go into your second question. You will probably be able to come up with about 100 words less than me. So that is worth bearing in mind. However, I think it's good for you to see a rich, detailed answer that you can revise from. In addition, I'm trying to train you to write an essay whilst thinking like an examiner. And that is a really key skill. And if you can get that right, you're much more likely to get the higher grades. And so as I am writing each paragraph, I'm thinking to myself, are there key terms religious specific language terms used by that scholar that I can put in each paragraph. So I'm actively trying to do that as I write. I'm thinking to myself, how can I back up what I'm saying in this case about Boff and liberation theology? And I'm going to deliberately put in Bible passages and little snippets of quotes from Boff. You will never see me write out long quotes because I can't remember them and I don't think it's a good use of your revision time. But there are little ones that I do remember because I've used them over and over again. If you can't remember exact quotes, paraphrase, and to be honest, that's what I tend to do anyway. Uh, I'm going to refer to scholars. Obviously, my main scholar is going to be Leonardo Boff, and I might not necessarily refer to anybody else um, in an essay like this, which is asking you to explain one person's view. If it's obvious and relevant, you can compare them to someone else if you're using that to explain the point the main scholar is making. So if you're saying so-and-so has influenced or Boff is deliberately different from, that would be relevant, but don't go off track. And then I'm going to show you how I'm linking back to the question. So the examiner wants to say that really, every point that you make is relevant, and that's what helps you get into the top band. So as always, in these questions where you have got multiple expectations, so that after you talking about the political, ethical and religious ideas of Leonardo Boff with reference to South American liberation theology. And so if you look at my beginning, for Leonardo Boff, politics has informed the work of liberation theology in South America because political theory. So I have deliberately echoed the words from the question down here. So I have a paragraph on politics and you will notice I've done them in the same order as the essay title because I'm using it as a bit of a checklist. 
Okay, then Boff would also state that poverty is an ethical issue. And then in my final paragraph, finally, the most important basis of liberation theology is religion. You will also notice at the end of each paragraph, I link back as well. So here, um, to conclude, the religious basis of liberation theology is Boff's primary focus. At the end of this paragraph, for Boff there, therefore the ethical basis of liberation theology. And here, for Boff, therefore the political basis of liberation theology. And so I've sort of made a sandwich and at either end my pieces of bread are the links back to the question and in the middle the meat is my subject knowledge. So because I am talking um, about politics and liberation theology, I'm going to refer to Marxism, which is going to be my main other school of thought or thinker other than Boff. And Boff does not see himself as a Marxist. That's really, really important. But he is using Marxism as a tool. OK, so Boff does not see himself primarily as a political figure or as a Marxist. But he does think that Marxism helps you understand why people are poor and what you can do about it. I think you can hear my little boy in the background. I'm filming this at home. Nothing awful has happened. He's just being a toddler. So, as I did in the essay on Guterres, I talk about the background, so the political situation of South America. So, colonial powers using South America to provide cheap resources and labour, whilst claiming to be Christian, often. Also then, when the empires fall, you then have North America stepping in and using South America again as a source of cheap goods and labour. And so then Marx turning to a theory, this would be a key term, called historical materialism. This is one of Marx's theories, so we're Returning back to Marx and material historical materialism just says that if you look at the history of the world, there have been different um, societal structures or economic systems that have lasted and then they've reached a crisis point, which often comes with a revolution and that previous system is overthrown and something new is put in its place. So, for example, we used to have a feudal system and that was overthrown. So, at this moment in time, we are in our capitalist phase. But Marx thinks that eventually that will be overthrown, that isn't there permanently. But something has to happen to overthrow the current capitalist phase. And that will happen when the masses that's a Marxist term, realise that they're being exploited by the ruling minority. And this is influential on Boff, not because he's after creating some kind of revolution, and, you know, it's going to be a Marxist revolution, but it's important to Boff to realise that exploitation is what is creating poverty. And furthermore, that you can do something about it. So that's the political background. Then, obviously, poverty is an ethical issue. So poverty results in malnutrition, um, high infant mortality rates, etc. And Boff would say that is a moral evil. And for that reason, Christians have a duty. They should be challenged to do something about it, to confront what he calls the systems of power that enable injustice. And that could be the government or the Roman Catholic Church. He also talks about first world Christians and that they should acknowledge that their overconsumption is creating poverty elsewhere because us in the West need that constant supply of cheap goods and that's fueling capitalism but is also fueling our overconsumption. The two go together. Overconsumption would probably count. Certainly impressive language. For that reason, 
Um, Boff has also got involved with liberation ecology, which could count as a key term, but could also count as a school of thought. And liberation ecology kind of brings together Boff's two passions. So acting as a good steward and caring for the world and caring for the poor. And he says that the impact of climate change is often felt at its greatest by the poor. And in addition, just like our demand for lots of cheap goods on a constant supply um, creates poverty because we need cheap labour to make them, it also creates lots of waste, which in turn fuels climate change. So, Boff would then turn to stories like the parable of the sheep and goats, and say that God is interested in our ethics and he will hold us to account for the way that we treat the poor. So there will be a separation of the sheep and goats and in that story that separation happens according to how they've treated the poor. But then, and this is important, the most important aspect of liberation theology is religion. And Boff says, like other liberation theologians, that liberating the poor is core to the Christian message. It's not an add-on, it's at the core. And whether you're looking at Moses freeing the slaves, source of wisdom, or the prophets um, speaking about injustice and exploitation of the poor, there has always been an emphasis on helping the poor. Um, in an article I read by Boff, he used this really lovely phrase, disruptors of order, that could count as key terms, or actually, it's a, it's a quote from Boff, so I'm going to do it pink. And he says that the prophets were disruptors of order, so they called out the kings of their day for exploiting the poor, and Christians should do the same. I'm now going to use... Um, my five, my favourite Bible quotes. This is Amos, who's my favourite prophet, um, who says that we should let justice flow like a river. And Boff says that is what liberation theology is doing. We are putting into action the words of the prophets and the words that you would find in the book of Exodus with the story of Moses. This is not an add-on. This is central to what it is to be a Christian. And another key term that you can use that you've met with C.H. Dodd in theme one is realised eschatology. So Boff says we need to bring the kingdom of heaven now. And if we're going to do that, or the kingdom of God, if we're going to do that, we need to liberate the poor. We need to see God's values embodied on earth. That's what it means to have the kingdom of God um, realised, made real today. And so justice and a respect for the sanctity of life needs to be seen to be flowing throughout the world. But again, Boff is saying, I am not, you know, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is not some kind of Marxist revolution. This is a Christian idea, not a political idea. And there's a, a famous quote, I've forgotten who it belongs to, but it's a liberation theologian that says something along the lines of, you know, give them bread first and then a Bible. And some people interpret that as meaning that liberation theologians just want to help the poor, but they, you know, and then, you know, you can maybe do a bit of religious work. And that isn't what that means. So Boff says, once we help the poor, their poverty stops being a distraction and then they can focus on salvation. So you're helping the poor so that they can achieve spiritual salvation. Helping the poor is not the end goal. It's the means to the end goal, which is bringing about the kingdom of heaven. And then there's a quote here from Boff again, that liberation theology never opted for Marxism or socialism, but for the poor. So it is not primarily a political system. And then I finish with my final linking statement. So to conclude, the religious basis of liberation theology is Boff's primary focus. By helping the poor, we can bring about the kingdom of God on earth. <laughs>